Ah, oh, god damn it, OBS, stop doing this. It's doing this weird thing. It's like not working right on the thing. Let's try that. Oh, there's black stuff. Hold on. Let's try that again. Uh, hold on. Settings. Quit. Yeah. Alright, I fucked up the graphics. DDLC.exe has stopped working. How great. Alright, let me open this up again. He's right, it is a pretty simple thing to get someone in a good mood. Wish people got in a good mood by seeing me. No thanks, why can't I choose yes? Why don't we take a look at your... What? I knew it. He was right. Except the revolution. fish. It's a fish. A cookie. Damn it. Restitution. <laughs> Comedy gold. Hugs the cookie. Mm. Darn. You know, it'd be super hilarious if someone made a coffee mug out of pure copper. 
I don't mean like alloy or slightly impure. I mean like pure 99.9 .9 repeating copper. You'd be unable to drink a hot drink with it. If you don't get the joke, um, copper conducts heat very well, so however hot it is in the cup is however hot every sur every inch of it is going to be. She has a boyfriend? Girlfriend? Yes, I can blame you for being paranoid. Oh my god, that feels good. I just need a massive hot can of chicken broth. That's what I need. Yes. It's got wheels, she's gonna fall. Hmm. 
Hmm. Do it. Do it. Look up her skirt. If I have enough of this soup, I'm probably going to be able to read, but my throat's too dry and hurts hurty now. She's going to fall. Hurry up. All right. Trying to look at my uh, Natsuki's leg shake. I I'm not. I was just Natsuki. Don't try to move. Just give me the box. You you perv. No. Get out. Okay. You're gonna fall. Catch her. Oops. hurts my feelings there. Yes. You got me. Guilty as charged. Oh no. She broke a book. Natsuki, are you? No! Oh hey, my voice squeaked as well when I did that. It's because of all the crap in my throat from having food poisoning. Oh, get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No. I don't even care that much. I'm just... having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's... it's fine. Every day's so hard... Just want to come to the club and what? Here. You're really nice to me. Huh? That sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well... I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Nah. <sighs> Natsuki lowers her head instead of shit. I didn't click history. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Nah. <sighs> Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple of minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box <coughs> in their correct order. She's 
She averts her gaze. What, you looking at my ass now? Alright. I'm ready. If you insist. Then a gun comes out of my sleeve. Oh god damn it. Ah, this st shit. This stuff again. Natsuki. Let's do it first. Right. Question mark. Is it that bad? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Ah, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously. You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you... Natsuki's face freezes like she just realized something. Y y you You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes for my poem one more time. The poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I I have to use the bathroom. Red face, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey Chando, did you do something to Natsuki? I don't know. I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? N no. I just told her that. Hold on, I'm slipping my hoodie off. Uh. My voice gets caught in my throat. <laughs> Cheating? What do you mean? Ouch. There it is again, if you insist. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it in private. 
It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross, she's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm gonna tell everyone. I think that's a parable for masturbation. Masturbation. Yeah, I relate to it. People don't like touching me because I masturbate. Or maybe it's just because I'm not a good person. Guilty pleasure. Yeah, you can say that again. Yep. 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 Sayori. Ooh. Oh my goodness, this is so good, John Doe. Uh. I love it. Battles, I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow the dust off of my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. 
In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. I hold them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo. Inside my head. Holy crap. It's pretty deep. Creepy. Maybe. Oh, God damn it, it's cursive again. Ugh. Alright, let's try to decipher this. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of, a piece of bread. My subconscious wall, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the sim symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. <clears throat> Shit. Oh, thought I clicked. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light up oh. <sighs> off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon slow shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feel myself again. Interesting. Can I push other keys on the keyboard to go forward? Oh, I can use space.
Someone said his. Oh, someone said hello. Hi. It says one watching, so I thought it was just me previewing the stream this whole time. Question mark. Oh, my noodles are stuck in the bottom of my cup. How am I supposed to eat my chicken noodle soup now? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest. Eh? She. She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it didn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She. She's right. Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that my, that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please, don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry. I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Don't worry. I hate myself every day. No, you're not ranting. Oh shit, a festival. Oh no. Performing. P. Oh, talking about death. Wow, really, really getting dark here, guys. Maybe it's foreshadowing.
What you gonna do? Oh, do I have to read another poem? <laughs> the way they fly. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayuri looks amazed. After image of a crimson eye, oh, there we go. After image again, I said that in one of my poems. Yeah, doing it in front of other people is always embarrassing the first time. Some guy says, hey, hey, dirty airty. I'm not speaking that much. Let me just say for stuff, I'm not speaking that much because uh, my throat hurts. I had food poisoning. We're looking at you because you're cute. Because you're presenting. Oh, damn. You got me. Jump. Wasn't so bad. Wow, way to cut her way to cut her deep, bud. You better not make me do that again. Oh well. D 
Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. No, doing it in front of a group of people is always hard. I know I am. I'm hard. Yeah, but you can't. Why is it embarrassing? Oh yay, am I about to make another stupid poem? I'm totally gonna butcher this like I butchered all the rest. Okay everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can't do this. I can't do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica. But I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica... Then I'll have to do my best. Let's bounce. Hey, say already. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori so fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh my god, a choice! This is like the first choice I've seen this whole game, besides the... Who do you want to give your poem to first? Uh... Fuck! I'm not going to save scum this, so I'm going to actually choose... I would walk home with Natsuki. Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, I think I would be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ah, you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even... There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Ouch. Oh, wait, I read that with the wrong voice. That one. Suicide. Inferno. Anime. Parfait. Raindrops. Friends. Graveyard. Shit. Trying to get that one. Anxiety. Damn it. 
Ducky ducky. Pleasure. Sunny. Ambient. Wrath. Memories. Strawberry. Desire. Precious. Peace. Pink. Vanilla. I'm trying to think what squid was. Taco. I thought squid was like taco or something. Tacos. Taco. Eh. I, don't, I think mon is something. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Oh my god, they broke the fourth wall, guys. Ah, oh, never mind. Oh no, she's sad. I made her sad.
Me? Hey, you. Uh. Yes. My phrasing. Oh no, she's gone. She left.
All right, let's see. I'll be your beach. Beach, please. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your, won your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go to. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you go through. In a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see your shot. <coughs> Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. My phone just buzzed. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Kind of seems like a Ramstein song for some reason. I don't know. There's a lot of garbage at the beach. You're right about that. Whoa, zero watching on YouTube. I guess apparently I stopped watching my own stream. I have it open so I can preview the comments and stuff. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Maybe there's someone here the whole time, for all I know. Beach. Oh, another beach. Wow, I'm surprised. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth... ...chaotically meets the surface under a clear blue sky and expands bliss. It's funny, I got, um... Uh, what was the word? Well, the word she said... Pavlovian. Pavlovian. She said Pavlovian, and I was able to uh, read that <coughs> read that one without stuttering. But I couldn't get chaotically because of the writing. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath gray, rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest word to get lost in world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. 
One can only build a sand castle when the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foaming tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drift forward and I return to earth forevermore. Nevermore. Quote the raven. Eat my shorts. She, the other girl, just wrote about it, bro. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, the feather. Whoop. Whoops. Lost adrift in the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope. Knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and fall, and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a, ugh, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist, and with a breath she blows me back afloat and I pick up a gust of wind. I don't know, that was pretty philosophical.
humans are in two-dimensional creatures. Oh, that's hilarious. Get it? Because this is drawn? Uh -huh. Is it just me, or did you say something strange? Eh? Something that's not a bit unusual. Catchphrase! Oh shit, what'd she say? What does she usually say? Yeah, something terrible is about to happen, I bet. Maybe the reason there's that warning in the beginning of the game it's not good for people with anxiety and depression and stuff. Let's see. Let's find out. Damn it. What? Guess the S takes a screenshot. Yeah, great. Wow. That's not nice. Singling her out like that. I'm useless. No! no. Ow. Shit. Sayuri. Uh. 
Ouch, was that the wrong choice? Damn it. Ugh. Natsuki. True down. Whoops. Oh. 
Oh shit, it's a black screen. What's something's gonna happen? Shit. Should I turn up the volume? Is this gonna better not be like a jump scare or something? All right, I turned the volume down. I don't know what it's at, but it's gonna make it a really quiet beep. Sorry, he isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. Oh god, it's already strange for her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayuri? Oh, her appearing, like, kind of startled me. I was expecting something. Is that a fucking dick? That bulge there? There's a minute of silence. Alright, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. Whoops. Someone slipped up. Oh shit. Trap. She's a trap. Seeing what for the first time? What are you talking about, Sari? Her dick. The thing is, she's a boy. I, I can't really say I didn't see this coming. I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. That's called chronic depression. I think. I think that was the name for it. What was it? Maybe. No.
It's okay. didn't. No, you are. No. Don't. No, you don't. Something's gonna happen. Suck my nut. Pass. Why wouldn't it be very good for you? Wow, what could possibly go wrong? in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off. Yeah.
Oof. Because I am. Slay me. Eat. Nicer. Sheared.
plastic bags, how high end. <coughs> memes, write memes on the cake. Wow. You calling me stupid? Oh, you think I'm cute? I don't know. You got pretty close to her when you pushed her up against the wall and licked the icing off her fingers. Whoops. Oh, there's the music. I don't know. Was I having fun? Good luck! Good luck about what, Czar? Good luck with my food poisoning, or good luck with the horror that's about to unfold at some point? What game is it? This is... Doki Doki Literature Club. Apparently, it's a psychological horror game, and it had some warning in the beginning of the game saying it wasn't good for people with anxiety or depression, so I'm going to see what what unfolds. <clears throat> You've made such good friends. 
That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, John Doe? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, John Doe. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. Good luck about my game. Oh, thank you. So, I have a feeling someone's going to, uh, get kill themselves here. It's, uh, it's getting dark. Like, real dark. Someone's gonna die. I know they are. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica's right. I should just... Monica. Monica's right about what? Sayori. What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Oh no. No, I like you, Sayori. Don't say that. Well, wow, that's quite a bit. I gotta say. Never liked someone so much that I want to die. That's how you feel, is it? Ooh. Even if you didn't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. are my true feelings so there's no way you could like me more than I like you I should have realized it sooner but spending time with everyone at the club making new friends and having fun with you every day it helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me that's why I'll accept any of your burdens as long as we continue like this every day ascended What's this guy saying? With you by my side, then I know we'll be happy. John Doe. Oh shit. Yo, that looks like um like something out of like a sci-fi movie where something like shoots through the atmosphere and just got rings around it. Look at that. Don't tell me you don't see that. That's like a rocket or something. <laughs> it's like a sideways uh, nuclear bomb. How they have the rings around the uh. Stem of the mushroom. Suddenly, Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. John Doe, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, John Doe. I want to be with you forever. Me too. Yeah, I want to be with me forever as well. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sayori, I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now? Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Chondo. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again, but no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Ah, uh, okay. I trust you. Shit. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things you know. I want everything to be the same as it always has been. Well, if it's the same, it's not going to be fun. Even if we really are a couple, I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. 
It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, John Doe. So he gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Huh? I don't really understand what Sayuri means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayuri? I... I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you loved me. But that's why I want to trust you. Act too soon? What you saying, Conrad? Is shit about to go down? <laughs> you know what's best for me. Only a picture and subtitles? Don't let those games figures sound as cool. I'm gonna subscribe. Thank you. But yeah, I'm I'm not I don't really play this type of game often, but my brother said that it was a scary game, so I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna try this out. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her, and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know, but I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayuri is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayuri. But Sayuri isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes by myself. Ooh, watch out, got Iron Man over here. By carefully stacking two trays. <clears throat> Natsuki is already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I'll probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over, so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Where's the sound? I just realized there's no music anymore. John Doe, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. Yeah. Oh, hold on. No, my headphones are still on. Weird. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is pacing. Ugh. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones. <sighs> Hold on, I need some water. Ugh. Screenshot. Screenshot what? This? Okay. Hold on. Uh, disable HUD. Hide the mouse. Yes. Save screenshot. And Steam screenshot, if you insist. They must be the one she prepared that has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayuri with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. Dummy! You'd think that on days this is important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayuri told me yesterday, and I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But, maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, John Doe. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? <sighs> oh, it's unfolding. Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But! I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sari really tell her about it that quickly? 
that we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez, you don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Oh, fuck. She's clairvoyant. Ah. Monica's being f as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh, yeah. They really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. You came here from Slob Mine Up Base Boosted? I am wholeheartedly sorry to hear that. <laughs> That's an abomination I never should have constructed. Something like this would definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? What's this? There's color everywhere. I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh, fuck. Percent sign. Whoop, whoops. Percent sign. Get out of my head. 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 Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Shit just hit the fan. Ah, uh, What is this? Reading the poem... I get a pit in my stomach. John Doe? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. Well, I'm gonna check the sound really quick. Oh, nope. It's still on. Weird. Ah, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so, ah. Uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? Oh, shit's gonna go down. I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. Oh my god, what's gonna happen? What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sari. Okay, so apparently, like I said, this is a horror game, so I'm going to turn my headphones down just a bit, just in case there's like a jump scare or something. Yep. Whoops. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simplest gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I thought this was my house. I don't expect an answer, since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Oh my god. What's gonna fucking happen? What am I gonna find? Sorry. She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. No jump scares in this game? Wow, way to spoil it. <laughs> Waking her up in her own house. There really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't this kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh fuck, what's gonna happen? <gasps> Whoa, shit. You lied to me, that, that did make me jump a bit. An exception has occurred. a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sari wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. 
then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayuri needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this if I just spent more time with her. Walked her to school and remained friends with her like it always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna load. I had only one chance, and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me, and now I can never take it back. Never. 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 End. Yo. Yo, is she dead now? Well, let's see what you said. By the way, you can look at that Acme. I'm assuming you mean Acme. The products that what's his face keeps on buying to uh, try to kill the the, the Roadrunner, the Acme files, and find that treespec.txt and read it if you're curious. Hmm. Yo. Hold on. Alt tab. I'm actually gonna go find that. Let's see. Uh, traceback.txt properties local files browse local files traceback I'm sorry but an uncaught exception occurred while running the game file renpy common start rpi line 256 in script python file renpy shit actually hold on I'm gonna add this to the the thing add a new window capture window capture notepad there we go. It looks like it's trying to do a dump here. Let's see. Restart top context. Oh, geez. I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a second. I can probably fix this, I think. Actually, you know what? This would probably be a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one who's making this so difficult. <laughs> well, here goes nothing. Oh, fuck. Did you delete her? Did I delete her? Ducky Ducky Literature Club 1.1.0. Okay, yeah, that's pretty scary. Back to the game. That gibberish. All right. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is. Hmm, looks like a Polish name. I can pronounce Zizlav. I should be able to read this. I don't know. My neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today. But it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this. But starting around high school, we would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's gonna chase me, af chase me, chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, <gasps> it's got weird things, yeah. Catch up to me. I'm scared, guys. Whoa. The screen just turned black. Oh, hold on. Wait, shit. OBS isn't displaying this properly. Hold on. Alright. 
<sighs> okay, I fucked up the graphics. Actually, this time. I don't think you can actually really alt-tab in this game. It doesn't really like, like it when you do that, so I'm actually going to restart the game. Well, no. First, I'm going to save. Empty slot. Turn. Like, settings. Quit. Like I said, I'm restarting the game because, uh... When you alt-tab, it kind of messes up the graphics, so I'm going to just relaunch it. Team Sativa. Null. Ducky, ducky! Whoa! Domino's Friday night equals pizza night. Mix and match two or more for... Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. No, you haven't. <gasps> it's fucking with the past. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that, but I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content with getting by on the average... <coughs> getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I packed up my things, I stared blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with them. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. John Doe? Fuck. Whoa. Annika? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Ah, yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked. But we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for, anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? <gasps> it's the Doki Doki Construction Paper Club. Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Uh, about that. I actually quit the debate club. I don't know about you, but I'm a master debater. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity or how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that, <clears throat> In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Stop doing that game. Literature. That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say... She... Hmm... Hey, John Doe. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I want to ask you to join, but if you could... At the very least, visit my club. It would make me really happy. Please? Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse something like Monica? Someone like Monica, excuse me. Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, John Doe, you know that? It's, it's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. Wow, that means so much. 
And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. Oh, last time he said he sold a soul for a cupcake. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back. And I brought a guest with me. Eh. Stop it, game. Uh, a guest? Seriously? You brought a boy? Boy! Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. By the way, welcome to the- shit. I didn't read that. But anyway, welcome to the club, John Doe. Ellipses. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Damn right. Whoa. No, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with a sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Mm. If her year's on the clock, it's time to rock. Uh, anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It, it's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. Oh, wrong voice. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran into John Doe in a classroom, and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, I just happened to run into him. In that case, you should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Oh, it's the tea set again that they, for whatever reason, had to give, had to get permission to store in the classroom. Hold on, I'm gonna turn on one of my lights. Ugh, less scary already. Why don't you come sit down, John Doe? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. <sighs> Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way, not as many people are in very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You got me. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess... Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teacher gave us permission. Still, I don't really get that, like, why you need permission for a tea set. It doesn't have a knife in it or anything. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated, Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean that, you know, I believe you. Well... Tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least enjoy tea. But I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiled to herself in relief. So, John Doe, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. But that can change. What am I saying? 
I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the room for a teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately- oh fuck. Uh, I read a horror book once. How bland of a statement. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. I got a rock. Aha. Uh -huh. I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ah, I hate horror. I hate horror. I hate stairs. I hate flying. I hate walking. I hate latest issues. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. You know, this game is a surreal horror game. Maybe they're... Self-referencing. <sighs> That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? W what? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and Give That Back. Fine, fine. Natsuki. You write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? Oh, I'm getting the hiccups and the burps at the same time. I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Atsuki averts her eyes. You would like them. Ah, I'm not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. <sighs> Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing them even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can see, set an example and help Natsuki feel more comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Uh... I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We could probably start fighting. <sighs> we should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I decided to take on the responsibility of vice president after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, John Doe? Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh, what's that? Now that we reach the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Huh? The girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. 
I guess I need to tell you the truth, John Doe. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet for an official club. We need four. And I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I would feel terrible for letting any everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, John Doe? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. <sighs> I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. John Doe, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. John Doe, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat. Huh. As Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. Alright, I'm going to write the poem and I'm going to stop for now. My throat's getting super dry from talking a lot and I'm trying to rehydrate as well, so it's kind of, kind of productive. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Bonica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Oh, God. Oh, this is, like, typed up. A dream. I was wandering in a abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room, its ceiling walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall. Anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of indeterminate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal walls of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Fuck, now there's only two of them. Is the other one gonna die? Boop! Milk. Effulgent. I guess. Sugar! Nightgown. Fun fact, these poems are randomly picked from a bunch. Awesome! So I got one of them. I got something. Lipstick. Vivacious. Guess. Chocolate. Climax. Candy. Nipple. Secretive. Frightening. 
Fluffy. Poof. Vanilla. Sweet. Suicide. Oh, whoops. Heart. Hi again, John Doe. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Whoa, shit. Yuri, is your face okay there? You okay? Thanks for keeping your promise, John Doe. Hope this isn't too overwhelming of commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to... <gasps> oh. Okay, that kind of startled me. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. Okay, the last one's gonna come in. She's gonna be glitching as well. I'm calling it. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Suki tamely have a big mouth for someone who keeps manga collection in the club room. Excuse me. Mm-mm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki pops back into her seat. I'm sorry, John Doe. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now that you're here in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So it only feels right for me to do something that... Something like that, if you ask. Wait. I didn't mean it like that. Uh. If you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Ah, uh, no. It's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be part of this club. So even if I didn't read a shit... So even I didn't, I'm happy to pick up a book. Anymore. Also, the screen constantly zooms in. I don't know. It looks like the screen's kind of tilting. We got kind of a Dutch tilt going on. Uh, are you sure? I just felt like. Oh yeah, I can see the screen subtly moving, subtly spinning. Hold on. Is it? Yeah, I can see right there when the desk meets the corner of the. Uh, Oh, you can't see my cursor. I remember to turn the cursor capture off. The very top left of the text box here. It was moving away from the desk. I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I don't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it. If you wanted. Th this is. How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. Enthusiastic I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, then you can read it at your own pace. I'll look forward to hearing what you think. Oh, there we go. Back to normal. No, no, that. Ugh. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Yeah, and distorting like hell. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Uh. I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Hey. Alright, what's gonna happen here? We got to a new location. Something creepy is gonna happen. You looking for something in there? Fucking Monica. Mm. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. 
What is the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just going to mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga's one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it unless you figured out where the other person stands. How did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. Wow, what's that supposed to mean? I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can go through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was just the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, John Doe. Consider this a lesson. Don't judge a book. <laughs> In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I want to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah, uh, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. Mm. It's exceedingly moe. Don't just stand there. Ooh. Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window sills. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Oh, why is that? Uh, I guess it's easier to be close like this. Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Natsuki crosses her arm and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her, either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? No, not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh... I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's a rare it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Her face is up close, something scary's gonna happen. I'm calling it. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read? Well I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you would like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm? You don't? Um... That's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah, uh, sorry. Like I could ever get any of my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Ah, uh, you still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge. Much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. That's pretty accurate. 
Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. My dad would beat the shit out of me if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Uh, why can't I just win? Can't, uh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Uh, so? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. The ellipses are just getting longer. And longer. And longer. Time passes. Natsuki is strangely quiet now. I glance over at her. Looks like she started to fall asleep. Oh, this is new! Finally, a new thing. I don't I don't think she fell asleep in the first playthrough. Hey, Natsuki. Y yeah? Suddenly, Natsuki collapses straight onto me. Hey, hey. Oh, my golly. Have a holly jelly hell. Oh, jeez. Natsuki, are you okay? You just broke her. She's broken. She glitched. Here. Monica reaches in her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. What? Hold on. Light up with the strange, scary black bars everywhere? Is that what you mean? She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. <laughs> I told you not to give... Mm. She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. Mm. Don't worry, John Doe. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. Anyway, why don't we all share poems now? Oh, God. This is going to be horror. Natsuki. Don't Natsuki, I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. Okay. Well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Natsuki rereads my poem. N never mind, I don't like giving you my opinion. Huh? Then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Uh... In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Uh, well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours is really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, ha! Well, that's not the... That's... Well, it's not great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So, in other words, you're saying you liked it? Err! Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. Uh, you're so... You just... You don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that, and you don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. I'm pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Excuse me. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Seems the same. Yeah... I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks I'm writing thinks writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your messages any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. 
Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into that than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Yuri. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes. More than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh, S sorry, I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um, it's it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay, this is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Wow, thanks. Ah, so it's that bad? No. Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really did notice. What were you saying? Right. Um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usual, usually typical of new writers. And I have been through that myself. I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and then they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh... Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm. Breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Huh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since this is our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> actually, this story isn't about a ghost at all, Chando. Really? I must have totally missed the point. 
Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon, you'll be left with nothing. And that's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Most impressive. But you are not a Jedi yet. It's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Let's see if she does anything. Hi, John Doe. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, John Doe. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm. I like it, John Doe. Really. It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> Oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. If you're interested in Natsuki, then always keep a snack on you. She'll cling to you like a puppy. <laughs> Natsuki's dad doesn't give her lunch money or leave her any food. And oh, fuck. We're into, like, domestic... What's the term? Neglect. We're into neglect territory now. I'll leave her any food in the house, so she's in a fussy mood pretty often. But sometimes she'll just... She just loses all of her strength and shuts down. Like earlier. This is just a guess, but I think she's so small because her malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth. But hey, some guys are into petite girls, you know? Yeah... Oh, I know. Sorry, just trying to look at the bright side. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in the Wall but he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings, but my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on a flat sheet of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. Oh, you think it's getting dark now, Conrad. We just saw someone hang themselves <laughs> like half an hour ago. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's getting darker. It's it's snowballing. It's snowballing darkness. Someone hanged themselves, now someone's being neglected by their parents. This game is terror. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very... freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ah, uh -huh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh... Well, I'm not sure if I know how to 
put it, I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. Guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities, even if they're just being nice. There's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. It's a literature club, after all. Ugh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica's writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Huh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and John Doe did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestion of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect to change it anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <laughs> and John Doe liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, uh, that's not what I... Uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Jondo appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh. And how do you know that he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... 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 No, I, if I was full of myself, I wouldn't deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as John Doe started showing up. N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecure. Whoa, whoa. Taking out your own insecurities on others like that. You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me? Look who's talking. You wanna be... You, you wanna be edgy, bitch. Edgy. Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Oh shit, guys, the world is falling apart. Most people learn to get over themselves as they graduate middle school, you know? If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad. You already do, don't you? That 
Did you just excuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let John know hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh, suddenly, Yuri returns towards me as she just noticed I was standing there. John Doe, she, she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. How did I... Whoa, whoa. Uh, Natsuki. 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 Um, hey, John Doe, why don't we step outside for a little bit, okay? Yo, what the fuck was that? Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little bit more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. <coughs> she quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Jundo, please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. Y you can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you two to be done. Well... I'm vice president, so please let me take the responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me to be around for something, Yuri. It, it's not that. It's not that. I just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with John Doe. It wouldn't be embarrassing with you listening. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I really... Uh... Headphones. Sunset. Strawberry. Massacre. Sing. Poof. Parfait. Romance. Jumpy. Graveyard. Shiny, pink. That string of Unicode. Giggle. Doki Doki. Pleasure. Sweet. Marshmallow. Pop. Lollipop. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. You know, I think I'm going to take a break and come back to this later. Yeah, I'm going to, uh... I'm going to put this on hold for a bit. Um, that's... Uh, yeah, I'm, I might come back to this tomorrow. I'm probably going to come back to this tomorrow, maybe later tonight, but I need to take a break from the the horror as well as my throat getting extremely dry because of my food poisoning and 
I was throwing up a lot and I'm super dehydrated and my mouth is all like cracking. So, uh, yeah, that I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come back later, you know? See ya.